Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for the session today. I'm your host, Mala Gupta, developer advocate with JetBrains. I'm also a Java champion and an author. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Maxim, team lead with DataGrip at JetBrains. Hi Maxim, thanks for presenting today. Hello, thank you for inviting me for this webinar. Maxim will demonstrate working with SQL and databases in IntelliJ IDEA. Before I let Maxim start with his, uh, with his live demo, let me share some quick details. Please use the chat window to post your questions. Yuri and Vasily, developers from the JetBrains team will answer your questions. And Maxim will answer the questions towards the end of his presentation. And the session will be recorded and hosted at IntelliJ Ideas YouTube channel. So if you haven't already uh, subscribed to our channel, please do. We host a new screencast every Wednesday on our channel. So Maxim, the stage is all yours now. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, my name is Max Sibelewski and I'm the team leader of DataGrip, which is the separate ID for SQL and databases by JetBrains. But what is interesting, the IntelliJ ID Ultimate actually inherits nearly everything uh, what DataGrip can do. So basically what I will show you today is applicable not only for DataGrip, but for nearly all IDs from JetBrains, like PHP Storm, RubyMine, they all have database support and it's more or less the same. But we will, uh, we will see the IntelliJ idea. So this is my super simple demo project where some database stuff is, uh, is used. So we have some classes with, uh, which access our database and we even have some like uh, queries with uh, classes with queries. So I believe it's, it's here. Yeah, so this is just a general thing which happens. You have your SQL inside your code and you have your database you access. And IntelliJ IDEA can connect to the database and help you write the queries, see data, manipulate data, ex export, import data and stuff like that. And I will show you today what you can do in IntelliJ IDEA. First of all, you need to open the database tool window. So in, in IntelliJ IDEAs, we have the concept of tool windows and each tool window represents some concept or entity uh, in your environment. And if we go to view to windows database, yeah, here is the database tool window, which is more or less familiar to everybody who works with databases. Here we have database tree with all the objects and we can have many connections here. For example, now I have two connections, SQL Server, database in Postgres, but actually we support many of the databases and nearly every release we add something new. For example, in the next one, we'll announce the couch-based support, but here is the full list. Uh, I will show you uh, all the things with the Postgres database, but nearly everything I will show you is applicable for every database we support. So here is our database tool window. It can be hidden or, sh or shown. What I usually do, uh, I assign the shortcut for the tool window because it's not super it's not super easy to go to with to the menu and use the mouse so if i go to preferences and key map uh, for yeah here is my key map and for example i want to assign the new key shortcut for database to window where is my two windows yeah here i go here at kateboard shortcut usually two windows are assigned to the shortcuts with a command or alt Command on Mac and Alt on Windows. So I want to use Command 7, Structure, OK, it's busy, Services, Command 9, Version Control. So I don't want to, I do. I will not use Version Control, so Command 9 for me is fine. I press OK. If I want to remove the shortcut for the Version Control, OK, Remove, OK. So what's then? Command 9 will show me this window, and Command 9 will hide this window. Now, for me, it's a little bit easier to access the database tool window. Database 3 uh, actually Show you, shows you the objects of the database uh, more or less clear, what you can do here in this tree. First, you can uh, rename your connections. By the way, the connection, it, it looks like this. So generally, uh, you put the host, the port, the authentication information, and when you press test connection and see that everything's fine, it means that your database works well. We have a couple of options for connections. Uh, Read-only is a very important option. We'll speak about it later. It actually will not let you to, to write um, or run any update or insert query to a database. Transaction control will show you if you need to manually commit all the transactions or you want the ID to do this for you. Uh, what is more, what is also important here, 
run keep alive query actually we will help you to keep your connection alive of course and from the other hand you can auto disconnect from your data sources and we have many other options here i will not put the accent on each of them if you use ssh or SSL certificate you can go here in schema sub you can actually select which schemas you want to see in the database tree. So you will not see all the schemas by default because there are, can be many of them. You can just choose those schemas you need. And advanced will not <laughs> tell about it now. It's just the options of the GDBC driver we use. So if you know what you need to tick here, you can do this here. Okay, I press okay. This is my Postgres data source. Uh, and this small green dot actually means that we are connected now. What else? You can put your data sources into folders. Uh, I have only two of them, but imagine you have 15 of them. Uh, you want to manage them in, in a more handy way. You can press F6 and create the group. For example, I want to create the group, my data sources, enter, and here you are. You can drag and drop your uh, other data source to this group, and now my group contains two data sources. Uh, so you can distinguish production and test data sources to different groups. What you can also do, by the way, with the production data source, be besides chicken read only here, you can also go to the color settings. Uh, yeah, here they are. And for example, put the color for this data source, which actually will uh, means that all the queries and files which are connected to this data source will be colored in red. So you will always know that you are now in the context of your production database. I will put no color to my data source. OK, uh, also, like all the trees in IntelliJ Platform, database tree supports the speech search. For example, if you have like your, your tables here and you want to find uh, inventory table, you can just type, and the inventory table will be highlighted. What you need to know is this search only works if the node is open. Uh, so, for example, if the node is closed, uh, it, it will not work. But if you want to find inventory table just out of the loop, you, you just need to use the search functionality, which we will highlight a little bit later. Uh, what else with this search? It supports abbreviations, like many searches in IntelliJ. For example, PP2 will bring me to these tables. Or, for example, FA will bring me to film actors. So, if you have many tables with very similar names, then use abbreviations, and this will help you. Uh, okay, database tree, objects, pretty clear. For example, this is my public schema. Here I have several ob uh, like several views, tables, routines, trigger functions, all the rest. Uh, what is really important that you can see the data of any table by just double clicking it. If I double click on a table, I see the data of that table. But let's begin uh, with the first simple query. For example, if you want just to query this database, uh, just to see some data, you can create a new query console. You press right click, new query console, here you are. Console is just a file, uh, a scratch file, let's put it like this, uh, which is attached to your data source. Here you select the search path. So Postgres public is the search path I will use now. And you here you just write queries. For example, let's select some data from actor table. It was pretty, pretty, pretty fast, right? So what I, uh, what I did now, I used live template. Live template is the concept of the IntelliJ platform, and we actually in data group use it a lot. Live template is, is the code snippet. We actually have, have some pre-built code snippets in data group for SQL. So if you are in the context of SQL, you can press Command J, which is the shortcut for live templates. Oh, by the way, shortcuts. I voice them, but I can also show them to do this i can go to plugins we have many many plugins uh, in our jetbrains ecosystem presentation assistant yeah let's install it it's just a plugin a little bit of third party plugin but actually nikolai chashnikov is from jetbrains but okay he he did it personally so i uh, i installed the presentation assistant and i hope in new version of the intellij id we don't need to reload the id i press ok So some scanning happening. OK, and now, yes, and now here you can see the shortcut I actually pressed to invoke some action. Command J, the shortcut which shows you live templates, code snippets. For example, SEL is the live template for the simple select. I press Enter. Here you are. Completion offers me to choose the table. The query is ready. 
But if you don't want to press Command J because it's a little bit too <clears throat> too complicated, we can just type the abbreviation of this template. SEL is the template is the abbreviation for the select all rows from a table. I type SEL, I press Tab, I choose table. That's it. For example, for insert, ins is the live template for insert. Yeah, I press Tab, I choose table, I choose column list, and here you are. I will highlight. Uh, I will hide that uh, project window. So live templates will actually help you to do repetitive stuff. If you want to create your own live template, it's also possible. You can go to settings, live templates. Here I need to write SQL, and here are our live templates. For example, if I want the uh, the carrot to be not here in my select template, but here to expand the column list, I can do this. If I press OK, then my live template SEL brings me here to the wildcard and then i can press alt enter to expand the column list and here is the column list uh, alt enter this was one of the most important shortcuts in all the intellij ids alt enter will actually show you what you can do with your code maybe you're familiar with this here with the wildcard it expands the column list you can create your own live templates these templates can be just a huge queries for your reports or whatever doesn't matter if you need to save something you use frequently go to live templates i'm the fan of this feature okay select actor our first query i press command enter this query is run and this is my result we can also use the the, the mouse doesn't matter this is the result and this is the services tree which database is the tree for sessions every time uh, you create a console file or you open any kind of the editor uh, we create a session and the session has its own client so it means that console2 file uh, connects with the help of the console2 session. You can kill all the se uh, session if you want and stuff like that. And by the way, you see uh, how long your, qu your query actually took here in the right part of that, uh, of that list. Let's go a little bit further uh, than our simple select. Uh, if I want to write join, you can see that we actually complete the whole join clause for you. So we understand that, OK, you, I have the foreign keys in my database. And if I press enter, the whole join clause is completed. If I write another join, the film is here, OK? And now I need film category. So here, the join offers me actor again, FC, abbreviation. Do you remember? This is a very useful concept. Brings me here. So I spend just three seconds, and my long query is ready. I press Command Enter, and I see the result here. Uh, let's go a little bit further. Uh, type somewhere. Again, abbreviation completion, my favorite feature, AI, will bring you here, actor ID, uh, something like this. Uh, OB goes for order by, FN, first name, I'm here. So my query is ready and the result is here. Uh, let's create another query, which will be pretty similar. For an actor, for example, where first name, like, and something like this. When you have several queries, and you run one of these queries, you don't need to select this query. You can. You can do like this, select, command enter, and everything's fine. But if your carrot is just here, you press command enter, you see the chooser. Because the chooser thinks uh, that maybe you won't run, run this query, but you can also run the whole script. And you run the whole script, you get two results. And for example, if you have the subquery, let's create it. Uh, OK. Sorry. Yes, subquery. If you create a subquery, uh, by the way, ID highlights you uh, this subquery because uh, you need to you need to have an alias here, and actually inspection will tell you about this. And you can introduce the alias alias. That's it. So then, one of the option, if you, I will format. By the way, my query command command alt l will format the code. Maybe you know this and you use it in Java, but in SQL also it also works. So I formatted now my query with the subquery, and if my carrot is here, I press command enter, I can choose the subquery, the whole query, or the whole script. And if you don't like this chooser, just go here to customize, and here you have some options. So for example, uh, ask what to execute is actually this dropdown, but if you don't want this dropdown to appear, for example, you always want to run the whole script, it works. If I choose the whole script, I press command enter, and the whole script is run, no chooser or whatever. But I will I will bring this uh, this setting back because I like this drop down. 
Okay, this is about running. By the way, if you have several queries, what you can do, you can type any type of command. So this is my query two. And this is, oh, sorry, my query one. By the way, do you see this green line? This is the spell checker. And this spell checker actually can go into the camel case. And if I go here, I'll enter the very important shortcuts. Typo, change to, change to query. Okay, I'm done. So nearly, uh, uh, even in camel case, even in commands, a spell checker will help. So now I have my two commands. And if I run the whole script, I can actually select the whole script or do it with the chooser, doesn't matter. These words will go to my tab names. So it will actually help you to distinguish which particular tab refers to which particular query. Okay, I have two queries. They are pretty similar uh, and they have pretty similar signature. What I can do, I can compare them. So this is the small tiny button, compare with. I can go here and see all the data grids from the whole ID. So even if would be this grid would be from another database, it will also work. But in my simple case, uh, I will compare my query query run with query two. Oh, this is not super bright example because the amount of columns is is different. Uh, but okay, the tolerance uh, doesn't work here because the the amount the number of columns is pretty pretty different. But let's make it a little bit more similar so i have four columns here four columns here and i will do something like like this okay and i will run it again and now they are more uh comparable i hope so where is my compare button my query two oh, let's do like this my query two my query one yeah and well, there is nothing, nothing usual between two, between these two queries. Uh, but anyway, I I now know that there is nothing usual. But okay, let's let's make it a little bit more bright, like n, um, like mm -hmm, n first name like something like this. Okay. Now I'll compare. Okay, more or less. So now I know that Nick Wahlberg and Nick Stallone uh, is actually the mutual uh, part for these two result sets. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go further. This is more or less about how you write queries. If you use IntelliJ, you know that some common editor features here also work. For example. If you want to duplicate the join, you can just press Command D. It will be and it will du duplicate the line. And now you can like uh, edit this line to make another join. So you can like with many many duplicated lines. This is also work. Multiple carrots also work. For example, if you want to edit all joins, you just select one join, press Control Command G, and now you have multiple carrots. And you can do something like this. Also, if you want to use multiple carrots with all the similar words, like actor, for example, you can select it and press. Control Command J uh, G, which will select all the highlights, and here you are. So you can mess your query really, really easily. By the way, what I forgot to mention, did you notice that when I expanded the column list for the joint query, all the columns from the joints were uh, are also here, and if they are highlights, or if they are conflicts, they are actually qualified. For example, if I will delete this F A, this actor ID will be highlighted in yellow because it tells me this is ambiguous. So before you run the query, IntelliJ actually understands that this is ambiguous. What you can do here, again, Altenta will help you. Altenta, qualify identifier with alias FA, and that's it. If you want to qualify all the columns, you can just select the needed columns, press Altenta, qualify, and everything will be qualified. F alias is here, and it's pretty cool that uh, it uses uh, it's used along the whole query, but if you want to rename it, you can go here, press Shift F6, which is the refactoring. Again, pretty um, common action for all the IntelliJ IDs. And you can actually type a new query here. And the query will be renamed through the entire, or the alias, sorry, will be renamed through the entire query. And by the way, this is now defined with play. If you will put the uh, alt enter, introduce table alias, this is also a collection. Uh, if you have the F alias here, 
and if you will rename this f ls, though that f ls isn't touched, right? Because we understand that you need to rename your query, or you rename your ls, sorry, inside the scope of one query. Okay, this was editing and writing SQL. Uh, let's now speak about navigation. When you write SQL, you need to know which particular objects do you use in this in, in, in your queries. Like in Java, when you need to go to the implementation of the class, here you can use command B action actually to go to the database tree to see this object. For example, actor, I press command B, I'm here. If I'm on the film actor or let's say full text column, command B will highlight the full text column here. If you want to see the DDL of this object, it's also possible and there are several ways. First, you can press command B, command B. So command B from the tree will show you the DDL, but command B from the code will show you the tree. But if you don't like this behavior, you can go to preferences, uh, database. Hmm, where do I have this? Yeah, we have, we, we have searching settings. It's pretty cool. Okay, tools, database. Yes, so navigation, prefer database view over DDL editor. If I uncheck it and then Command B or on film category will directly show me the DDL of that object. Another way to, to see a DDL is to use quick documentation. So if I'll just put the mouse on the object, the auto-generated definition is also shown here in my quick doc, uh, in my quick doc window. If you want to see the data uh, of the table, for example, again, actor, you, you, you just want to know what, what, what is inside. You can press F1, which is the quick documentation window with the data, because the hover will not show you the data. Guess why? Because we don't want to connect to the database if you don't want it explicitly. But F1 will show you the first 10 rows of this table. But this is just the displaying of the data. You cannot edit it here or do some, uh, some smart stuff. But if you want to go to the data editor, press F4, which is jump to source action. Uh, inside the, the IntelliJ idea, and in this moment, you will see the data of that particular table, actor table. So <clears throat> let's see what this data editor can do. Another useful shortcut, by the way, I always use Shift Command F12, hide all other windows. So I want to, to put your attention into this data editor, Shift Command F12, everything should be hidden. And if I press it again, I restore the previous layout. Shift Command F12, I only see my actor table. I can even close all the other tabs and uh, see only data editor for actor. Toolbar is overcrowded, but uh, many things are important. Here is the paging. You can choose any page size. If you choose all, everything will be shown, but be careful with all options. If you have millions of rows in your table, it can be a little bit dangerous. So uh, that's why we have we have 500 as an option. Uh, you can change it here, or you can go to preferences, and I believe it's the setting called page size. Yeah, yeah. So if you uncheck this uh, uh, all the time, you will load the data. All the rows will be shown, but. This is the bad advice, really. OK, refresh, pretty clear. Uh, add new row, you can add new row. You can delete rows, uh, more or less uh, clear. You can actually edit existing rows. For example, uh, panel up Guinness, if I want to make her jelly. And for example, if I want to make all this person's John's, that's also possible, John. You can even copy paste data. You can select this. Copy and you can paste here. So this is kind of a small Excel, right? You can even copy from the external source. Now I will show you this. I will create the scratch buffer, which will be which is just a temporary text file in the middle of nowhere. If you want just to make a, some scratch or, or whatever, you can you create a scratch buffer or scratch file. What's the difference? Scratch file has its own language. You need to choose the language. It can be HTML file or whatever. If you if you choose the buffer, the TXT file is created. So. Uh, just a simple CSV, uh, James Dean, oh, I don't need this space here, and um, I don't know, uh, Kelly or Osborne, uh, and maybe John Doe. Okay, I copied, and here I select it, and here you are. So we detect that there is a CSV in your clipboard, and we can actually paste it here. So after you 
make updates. These updates are not in the database now. Before you submit these uh, updates, these updates are local. So for example, if you decided, okay, this, this, was, this was the mess, right? You can go here, revert, and everything will be reverted. This is now also doesn't look super, super pretty, but I want to make this change. Okay, before you press submit, now everything is local because it's highlighted, right? So you can actually inspect which particular queries will be run when you press submit. Uh, so, okay, everything is fine. You press submit, and now my data is in the database. So that's why we call it data editor, not viewer. Okay, let's go. Let's go to the toolbar again. DDL, DDL of the table, pretty much clear what it is about. You can go back here, compare. You can compare any grid, as I mentioned before. So I can compare this table with my query one result. Yeah, some sense even here. Nick Wahlberg again. Uh, what else? This is very very important drop down. Data extractors. Every grid, uh, every table in data grid. It doesn't matter, table itself or the result set or the view, whatever, or the CSV file can be exported in many ways. And these are these ways. Here, there, uh, here are these ways. SQL inserts, uh, what happens here? If you choose this, you just select the needed data, you press copy, and you go to some text file. And here, here you are, you have the insert statements generated. They are not highlighted, but I can, say to this text file, hey, this is Postgres, please highlight it, and it works. Uh, by the way, if you if you want to select the whole, if you want to export the whole table, you don't need to select everything, you just go to export data, and here you have the preview, and you can specify the output file, and the whole table will be generated to this particular file. But uh, I will show you the export powers with a clipboard, because it's just a little bit easier. SQL updates, pretty much the same. I copy, I paste it, and updates are generated for these particular columns. Uh, then, CSV, TSV, pretty much clear. I press copy, I press paste here, and this is my CSV generated. You can, of course, configure CSV formats, specify the values, specify the quotation options, and all the rest. The most interesting part here, scripted extractors. Scripted extractors, why are, they, why are they called script? Because these are just scripts. You can go to scripts directory here and see that these exports are just scripts written on Groovy. Uh, let's inspect the JSON Groovy script. This is just a script which makes JSONs from the, from the data. So if you want to create your own format, if you want to customize this format, you just go here, just make some adjustments here, and this script will work. You can even go to GitHub, download this, uh, the extractors from other users, just put these extractors into this folder, and as soon as you do this, they will appear here. So for example, I choose JSON extractor. Pretty much clear, I copy my data, I go to my like text file, I paste it, and here you are, this is my JSON generated. I can even again say to this file, hey, this is JSON, please highlight me in a, in, in a better way, and it works. Uh, so uh, pretty extractor, we added it recently, makes you just a text uh, text table. You can send it to your account manager via messenger or do it whatever with this with this format. Uh, what else we have here? Markdown, SQL insert statements. It more or less duplicates uh, the functionality of this one, but this is scripted, so it means that you can adjust it. HTML, CSV, XML, what else? So you can. As I mentioned before, create your own formats with the help of scripting extractors. Uh, let's go. Let's go further. Export data. I already showed it. Copy to database. This is a very interesting feature, and I want to highlight that it works not only with tables but with result sets. I go back to my query console. Okay, recent files. I wanted to tell about this a little bit later, but now I use it, so now I will mention it. Recent files. Now I want to go back to my query console. It's already closed, but recent files, command E, can actually give me the access to all the tabs I used before, to all the files or whatever. It doesn't matter if they're closed or open. Console 2, C2, okay, great, abbreviations. You remember abbreviations are perfect. So now I'm in my query console. And why do I need this? Ah, oh, okay, yeah, result set. If I run this query, I get the pretty complicated result set. 
So let's imagine this result set is received after one hour of waiting and you want to query this result. It happens pretty frequently. You don't need to wait for one hour more. You can just go to copy to database. You export this uh, result to some other database. Uh, for example, you can even export it to, to another to, to the database of another vendor. So BBO, I don't, I'm not sure that my SQL Server data source is working. Let's check it. Um, SQL Server, where are you? Test connection. Okay, everything's fine. So I will show you how Postgres result set can become a SQL Server table. So I have the master DBO here. Uh, maybe I will turn on Sequila schema, which is my schema. Okay, my Postgres console. I will have, I will hide the database tool window. I run the query. I get the very long result set with lots of columns. I go to copy to database, and here I type DBO uh, on Sequila. Okay, so this is the uh, table from PG result. Uh, I inspect the DDL, everything should be fine. Import. Something went wrong because mineral row size, okay, something's wrong with the with the size of the data. Okay, let's let's make this result set a little bit a little bit smaller, like this. Great. My query one. Export DBO Sequila. Okay, I need to type it again. Um, per table from PG results. Import. Great, my my table is created. Where it is created, I can use go to symbols. I will show you this a little bit later, but I I, I just need to use a table from the Postgres result. Okay, we don't have it here, but in all, hmm. do I really have it now? Let's check. Maybe all secure. Ah, okay. The schema, the schema is, is isn't ch chosen in the tree. That's why the search didn't see that table. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Here we are. So this is the SQL Server table created from the Postgres result set. Can be quite useful, especially if your query takes a long time to finish. Okay. This uh, and this actually can be used from from the table as I showed before. You just open the table. Uh, you go to export to the database and uh, export it to the database. Pretty much clear. By the way, when you have a huge result set, also another cool tip you can use. This is my query with lots of columns. I run it. I have my uh, I have my table, and this happens frequently, right? Many many columns. Couple of tips. First tip: you can go to I icon here, transpose. Now we much easier to 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 inspect this table what you can also do here you can press command f12 which is the maybe maybe use it for java classes structure view for tables this is just a list of columns and if you want to to navigate some column you you just type the name replacement cost okay i see here but let's imagine i don't know where it is rc ost great i press enter and i'm here uh, in this structure, you can even hide columns with a space key or show them. But what is really useful here is to type the name of the column if you want to navigate to this column. Okay, let's go back to our actor table. So this is a mess. Remember, Shift Command F12. I hide all the windows, and we will continue inspecting our toolbar. Copy databases is covered. Here is the session for this particular table. Mm, so when you actually did data, you need to use some session. And here's the list of that session. You can change this session, especially if you use one transaction inside these sessions. It can be useful. View as uh, I already covered it, but uh, let's put another uh, another piece of attention to this icon: table tree or text tree. This is just a kind of a tree view for the table. It's more or less created for MongoDB because there are documents in JSON format. But if you want to see your like relational tables in this format, this is also possible. Text, and text will actually create the text format based on this extractor. So if I choose CSV, the CSV is here. Uh, if I choose SQL inserts, okay, SQL inserts, not super useful, but pretty can be useful. So if you want to see your data in any format, not export, but just see it in this format, just choose this format and here you are. 
So this is the I icon. Let's go back to table and some settings. Uh, sort via order by, by the way, what does it mean? It means that if you uncheck it, the sorting will happen on the client, on the data group side. So only 200 rows will be sorted here on data group without running a new query. But if you will check sort via, via order by, the sorting will actually run the new query. If you want to know which query is run to see the data, you can go here, view query, and now I see it. Okay, this is this is my query. I have sort via order by checked, right? I press first name, go here, view query. Yeah, this is my order by clause added to the query. Filter criteria. More or less clear, you can write any type of filters here, like you write the where clause. So, for example, I don't know, F first name like. Uh, okay, right. I press enter and I inspect the new query. The new query is here. Uh, and this is the where clause. So you can do um, something like this. Uh, like this. And yeah. Uh, but if you want to filter data on the client side, especially if your query is long, you can use the text search. So I just delete everything, press enter. No filters, 200 rows, and I want to. Oh, let's hide. Let's 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 uh, show all the rows. But all the rows is 200 rows in our case. Okay, I want to to see all the Jameses. I can use text search command F. James. Oh, filter rows. Oh, so I have only one James here. So if I filter rows, I can see only the matched rows to the criteria, the text criteria I put into the search field. If I don't filter rows, these rows are just highlighted but not filtered. This is pretty much useful, especially when you have a huge result set and you don't know in what particular column you're looking for, for the data. So you don't know where are your Jameses, in what field. This works. Also, if you want to find some Jameses, you can use, I'm sorry, you can use uh, a database way, a full text search. For example, I want to find all the Jameses in Actor, but I want, to, I want the database to handle this. I go here. And I, no, not in actor, everywhere. I go here and I go to full text search and I say, okay, this is, this is the targets, all the tables, contains games. Uh, search. Okay, James are found in actor table and in customer table. In actor table, we have only one James. Do you remember that? In customer, we have two Jameses. I double click on customer. Yeah, and I see Kathy James, and by the way, it's the last name of Kathy, so the first name like it wouldn't work. Uh, and I have James Gannon in customer table. Again, it was full text search. Let's go back to our actor table. I again use written files. You remember? Uh, okay, this is my data filter. I covered it. Text search. I already covered it. Uh, ordering. I already covered it. So more or less, more or less everything this data editor can do uh, is shown. What else? L search, yes. Uh, if you use IntelliJ ID, you might, you might be aware of double shift. If you go to double shift, you can search everywhere. So you can search for classes or whatever, or even settings. I find a reformat code. Okay, I can go to, to preferences and um, to jump to the reformat of Spring Boot or whatever. So all is everywhere. And of course, database objects are already here. So uh, I have a table called, not a table, view, inventory in stock, I suppose. In, in stock, something like this. Yeah, inventory in stock. So I press enter and I'm, you know, oh, this is the function, right? But if I want to search for view, uh, view, view, customer balance, I think, something like this. Yeah, get customer balance, oh, maybe it's also a function. Okay, I'll make a small cheat. I'll see which views I have. Okay, sales by film category. I close everything. I don't know where it is. Command O. I go to oh, double shift. So command O is go to close. Double shift. Uh, I forgot the name. I forgot the name. Sorry. Uh, inventory. Uh, no, 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 no. Database schemas views. Okay, sales by film category. Yeah, yeah. So double shift. S B F C. Bring me, oh, I have the same view in the SQL Server, but I want to go to Postgres. Uh, but if I double click it, I see that the data of that view, 
DDL will actually show me which particular DDL is used for that view. So this is this is double shift everything. Uh, in data grip here, instead of classes, we have tables. That's why I always use command O. But in IntelliJ, you only have classes here, so you don't have database objects here. Before you had, but it was not super convenient. Files more or less clear. If you want to find a CSV file, you just have CSV. Okay, this is my CD CSV file, and I'm here. By the way, when you open CC file, you can see this small, tiny icon, Adidas table. So this is the format, okay, for more or less the same. Okay, and now this is the data editor for my CSV. So I can put a new value here pretty easily, and it will be reflected in, in the actual file. Uh, what else about search? Classes, files, yeah, files, symbols. Symbols is actually the tab where everything which in Tauji indexes uh, is shown. In our cases, it is like methods, classes, database objects as well. So if I want to find full text column, I remember I have this column, yeah. So full text, Postgres, public, film, it's a table with this particular column. I press enter and now I'm navigated to this particular column in that table. And uh, the last but very, very important thing, actions. Uh, I, think, I think this is the most important part of the idea really. Find action. By the way, it can be it can be invoked by the special shortcut, like all the tabs. So all is double shift. Go to class is command O. Go to files is shift command O, I believe. Yeah. Go to symbols is pretty complicated. Shift alt command O. Nope. Shift alt command N. Nope. I don't remember. Sorry. So if I want to go <coughs> symbol, I just double shift and press tab. But find action. Shift command A. I think the most important shortcut in the IntelliJ ID. Why? Because if you don't know how to invoke some action, but you know this action exists, if you don't know the 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 menu item, and by the way, in, in Mac you can you can choose, you can do something like this, you know? It does work, yeah. You can do something like this if you have Mac. But if you have all the other uh, operational system, you don't you, you don't know how to find something. So you don't you you know that for example, database tool window, it exists. You go to find action, shift command A, database to window. Okay, sorry, database. Yeah, here is my database to window. If I want to, for example, export my table, but I don't know how, where is the button export. Shift command A, export, export data. This is the export data dollar. If I'm in my query console or whatever, oh, let's go back to the query console. If I want to format my code, I don't remember the shortcut. I don't know the menu item. Command shift A, reformat my code. Enter and that's it. And if you if you find you if you find yourself uh, using the same action all the time, you can assign the shortcut for it. For example, new scratch file. This is this is my favorite action, and I always use it. New scratch file, new scratch buffer. Okay, because it's just a scratch file. So shift, shift command N is a shortcut. But okay, scratch buffer. I use it, but there is no shortcut. You can assign the shortcut just from this place. Alt Enter. New scratch buffer in other shortcut. Okay, now I need to to find the free shortcut. Control Alt Command L. No, it does, just doesn't work. Control Alt L. Okay, it's free. Okay, and now press Control Alt L, and new scratch buffer is created. So again, if you find yourself running all the time the same action from the find action, just assign the shortcut for it. So this was a chapter about search. Now a small chapter about how not to lose your work. Some platform features here, of course, help. The first one, and I like it very much, local history. So if you have your files under version control, it can be not super useful, but if you have no version control established, or if something went wrong with it, uh, or you just want to, to go back in time five minutes before and you didn't commit or push or whatever, you can go to show history. History, local history actually, saves everything you you input into this particular file like with google docs you can go to any revision like okay this 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 is this was a cool revision right so revert and now it's revert so local history actually uh works on on text files and what i myself recently discovered local history works even on folders cd csv 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 huh? stupid name right i can go here and i delete this file okay and now it's now now it's deleted. And finally, if I realize that something went wrong, I can go to local history, 
show history and now I can recover my file with the help of the local history. So if you delete from IntelliJ idea, you can recover this file afterwards. And yeah, everything is fine. Uh, not losing your work. What else? Pasting from the clipboard history. Shift Command V. So this is my all my clipboards uh, I copied during this webinar. So this was in my clipboard, and for example, I knew that okay, two hours ago, it was a brilliant clipboard. I just paste, and and here you are. My 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 content is pasted here. Uh, what else? Console history. It's just a history of all the queries which were run from this particular, not from this particular console, but for this particular data source. I think in the new release we have to rename this because this will show you the queries for for this data source from from all the from all the consoles. So again, it, in in speed search work here, if you want to find all the queries with, I'm sorry, I just selected it. with joins, you can type joins. Okay, this was my join queries. Here you are. What else? We also have uh, we also have the SQL log. Uh, no, I don't need this search. SQL log. So SQL log is actually a file which contains all the SQL queries which were run from data query or I would say tell data query, from the IntelliJ idea. It includes the introspection queries, like to queries we need to retrieve the system objects, and also just the user queries. So if you know that you run something really important, you can just open this log and inspect it and see the queries you need. Uh, and recent files, I already showed it. Sh uh, I already showed it. If you want to reopen some file, just don't go to this file again. Don't use stamps. Just use recent files. And again, for example, I want to open my uh, my my Java class. Yeah, I just have here, and here you are. Shift Command E. Recent locations. It's just a window where you see the snippets of the text where you actually uh, was before. Like, I don't know, this is what my function, I press on this function, and here, here, here am I. Uh, so this was a chapter about not losing your work. I think we have 30 minutes left. I, I think I will finish in 50. Uh, there are more, many more things I wanted to highlight. Okay, we're in function now. What is really interesting in IntelliJ is that we actually cache all the code uh, of the source, all, all the source codes of the functions and views, and actually means that this code of this function is now remembered by IntelliJ idea. So, for example, what does it mean? It means that if you want to find some piece of text inside your database, inside the source code, so I will close everything to make it a little bit more clear. I close O, I close database, and you know, okay, finding path, which is actually a thing to help you to find text in any file in your project. But what is interesting that it can also go into, into the source code of the database. So this code is located in in inventory in stork SQL, which is this, uh, the SQL for this particular function. So if you want to find the text of the function in your database, you can you can do this. And by the way, that's why we provide uh, we provide a navigation, and it, and this navigation is pretty fast. We load all the objects, we load all the sources, and then we can we can play with them. That's why when you use the inventory in stock function. Uh, like okay, let's go to my create console and uh, some inventory in stock. Uh, I, I don't remember the, the something like this. No, okay, I will just do something like this. Mm. Okay, yeah, so this is the text to run this function. And if I, for example, want to copy this text to use it. And this is the inventory in stock usage, right? If I want to see the, the, the DDL of that code, I just press Command B and I'm navigated to the DDL. So it, does, it doesn't load it on permis, it, it's already there. And that's why the navigation and all this stuff is pretty, pretty fast when we speak about databases. Uh, okay, I think that's more or less all. Ah, yeah, one last thing I wanted to show you. Actually, two last things. Uh, if we speak about generation, uh, gen, uh, code generation, what I forget, if, if you have just tables and you want to create the Java classes from these tables, what you can do, you can go to uh, scripted extensions. This is the extensions scripts, again, scripts, which uh, are again in this scripting directory. But this schema scripts will help you to, to generate classes or any other objects for these tables. 
So the pre-built one is create a POJO. So if I use it, generate POJO Groovy, for example, from the actor class, I can put it into the SRC folder. That's it. It's generated. If I go to SRC, now I have my actor Java class here. And it's actually generated from this particular table. And it respects all the column and like makes all the fields and stuff like that. And if you use your if you use your SQL, just a raw SQL inside your inside your 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 Java code, you can actually have all the code in assistance here. So this is just a small uh, Java application uses the raw SQL. For example, this is this is the the query. You can press Alt Enter. Remember Alt Enter, super important, and press Inject Language or Reference and say, okay, this is the Postgres string. And after you inject the Postgres language here, like the code in assistance work. And you can even navigate, you can press F1 on the actor table, see the DDL of the table. You can press Command B, you can press uh, F4. So everything you, you like about the query console will actually work inside your, your Java string. So inject language into, into strings, and this will help you to write queries just here. So for example, I can do something like this, mm, like this, and, and I'm fine. Okay, so more or less everything, 50 minutes. If I need to answer some questions, please let me know because I see only the IntelliJ ID on my laptop. Thank you very much for your attention anyway. Thank you so much, Maxim. We had a lot of questions, but uh, almost all of them have been already answered by Vasily and Yuri. So let me uh, kind of pick one or two questions which uh, would kind of it would be better if you also add something to it. So one question is how to focus row filter, which is the filter criteria in a table by keyboard shortcut. Uh, okay, I think we have the shortcut, but I don't remember it. So let's let's just let's just check. Find action filter criteria filter by. Ah, I did filter criteria here. Here is okay. I'm struggling. I'm struggling reading these mark shortcuts. Alt Shift Command F. Okay, Alt Shift Command F. So I need to be an octopus to make it. Okay, great. So now I'm here. But what you, know, you can also use, you can use the UI from from the context menu. So we even pre-built some filters, and we, by the way, we 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 respect the the the, the clipboard. So if I go here, I don't know first name. It it doesn't make sense, but anyway, and if I go here to filter by filter name equal first name, you just click it and you have it. Yeah, so the, there are three ways, mouse, UI, or the very, very complicated shortcut, which is, again, Alt-Shift-Command-F. Right. Um, and yes, you mentioned that one of uh, the most important shortcuts in IntelliJ IDEA is uh, search everywhere or find uh, action. The other one I want to add to the list is Alt and Enter, which is context sensitive, which I use all the time. It lets me kind of discover a lot of features which IntelliJ IDEA has, which probably I don't even know it has. Yeah, yeah, um, and I, yeah, and I highlighted it. So especially my my favorite case mm -hmm. with the one in the column list and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. just just use it all the time. And like mm -hmm. I'll tend to he introduces a table alias. Always try, and you will you will have something new. Right. Okay. So uh, there was a. Another question is, where, uh, will you show anything about the persistence window uh, for generating entities by database schema, for example, creating new persistence units? Um, uh, what, are, you what are persistence units? Uh, uh, sorry, it, it, it isn't clear for me. Um, yes, when I was reading the question, <laughs> it was a kind of unclear to me as well. So let's skip this one and uh, talk about, okay, so the other question is, do we have uh, AI ML in any ways in our IDEs now? Sorry? Um, are we using any artificial intelligence or uh, machine learning in uh, our uh, IDEs? We use some, but I'm not uh, super aware of this because we are on the, on the very beginning of that path. We try to use machine learning mm -hmm. for, for the code completion, but not yes. for only, not for for databases. We maybe we do some something mm -hmm. for Java now, but we are we are just exploring mm -hmm. this area. But no machine learning for databases for sure. 
Right. We also had a blog post. I was trying to uh, kind of uh, find the link. I couldn't. But there was a blog post some time back from the IntelliJ IDEA team, which talked about using AI ML to have better suggestions for you when you're working with the IntelliJ IDEA. So we are using for sure um, in our IDEs. Um, okay. The other one is... Mm -mm. Um, right. So there was... Uh, uh, not sure whether it's a question or a complaint or a comment. So the comment is glad I'm not the only one who usually runs into size or data type issues importing other databases into MS SQL, which is max LOB size uh, value. Yeah, uh, this is truly possible because we, when we import from other databases to MS SQL or whatever, we do. Mm -hmm. we, we use our general mechanism to convert types, and mm -hmm. this is not. This mechanism isn't perfect. It only it only handles some pretty pretty simple uh, stuff, and we know that we need to improve it. One also one command also. What we can what we do now in, in not a better way. We if you import the table from the database to the database of the same vendor. We mm -hmm. go through this mechanism still, but that's not super correct, I would say, because if if the DDLs are fully compatible, we can just transfer the DDL because the right. vendor is the same. But now we use this mechanism, and I think we need to improve it. Right. Um, okay, so there's another question. It says, how to display binary 16? So 16 is in brackets, so that would be the size on MySQL table as UUID in IDEA. Or okay, I don't one? have the example table of, of, of this binary, but like the general, mm -hmm. I don't know, if, it, if it's the bug report, so it's need, it needs to be filed. But actually mm -hmm. here, if you want if you want to display some binary, if this is the image, so I don't have the image field, but okay, just mm -hmm. attack it. Maximize. This is the the tool window to show some big values. If you have binary images, here will be the image. Mm -hmm. If you have the geolocation here, it will be displayed on the map mm -hmm. here. So try using the maximize. If the result mm -hmm. uh, will not be perfect, just file an issue, please. Right. And uh, the second part of the question is, uh, uh, or add custom for matter for my data, like debugger data view. So is that possible to have a custom view for uh, the data as well? Yes, yeah, of course. Like this, this, this scripted extractors are used for the custom view. So you just create mm -hmm. a Groovy script to display the data in mm -hmm. any way you want. And then you just mm -hmm. uh, choose text here and, mm -hmm. and it will be fine. So this is the JSON viewer, but you can create your own viewer. That is great. Um, okay, so mm -mm -mm. is there support for geospatial data types? For instance, DB, DBver using a DB to display markers in a map. Yeah, uh, I don't. Sorry, I don't have the example, but we do have GeoViewer, so you can even see mm -hmm. the UI for this. So yes, like a couple of releases ago, we added the displaying ge geotypes on the map. So yes, the the short answer is yes, it works. Right, and I'm not sure whether you had the opportunity to play with code with me uh, feature that we have. Uh, the question is related to that. It says, is database tool window also supported in code with me? Uh, no, it's not yet supported. So I think the database tool window is, I mean, the only plugin which which doesn't support it yet. Okay. Um, right. So. Um, I think we have covered uh, uh, most of them. So I, I'll take one last question because we just have one minute left. Is there a way to get the queries for my petties in XML format? Uh, sorry, uh, it wasn't clear. The queries in XML format, which kind of queries? Uh, I'm not sure whether I'm pronouncing the name right. It's M-Y-B-A-T-I-S. My betas, is that you pronounce no. that? Is there it's a way correct. to get the queries yeah. for? Yeah, I just don't know yes. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay, so I think we are done. Probably we do have uh, a couple of questions which are coming in now, but but anyway, okay, just, me... yeah, you know, the yeah. announcement for everybody: just tweet at us. Data Grip uh, is our Twitter. We read it, mm -hmm. we answer it. 
So if you have questions, just just use Twitter and we'll be happy to answer. If you don't like Twitter, if you're against all social medias, datagrip <laughs> at thebrains.com, our email, old school stuff, please email us as well. So that, that was a, a good one. So please uh, let the questions come in and uh, the team is here to answer the questions. Thanks a lot, Maxim, for presenting today. And uh, I hope all the viewers were able to learn something new today. And yeah, I would I like to thank... Yes, I would like to thank everyone for attending the session and answering all the questions. And one last point before we say uh, bye is stay tuned for our next webinar. We host a webinar for you every month. And if you have any suggestions, please let us know. You can reach out to us on Twitter or email us any way that you want to. Thank you so much, Maxim, and thank everyone. Thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye.